you know, as a, a guy who grew up watching England and got up early in the morning to watch that final, that shot still hurts. In, in the days of the late 80s, it was an infamous uh, shot and it, it's gone down as one of the stupidest shots in cricket history. World Cup Final 1987. England are favourites against Alan Borders Australia, who came into the tournament as rank outsiders. Chasing 254 for a win, England cruised past the halfway mark. The captain Gatting was at the crease. He was 41 or 45 balls. He looked to be in complete control. England were two for 135, so they, they seemed to have the match in hand. Border is desperate for a breakthrough, and none of his frontline bowlers look likely to get one. And Alan Border tried to change something. His, his number one off spinner, Tim May, wasn't bowling very well. I think he bowled four overs for 20 odd runs. So he changed it, he brought himself on. Proved to be a master stroke. Bowling left arm over, Border's first delivery is drifting harmlessly down the leg side until Gatting intervenes with one of the most infamous shots in cricket history. And suddenly, a brain lock by the England captain. He decided to play a reverse sweep. It would have been a, um, a leg side wide, but Mike Gatting had decided he was going to reverse sweep anyway. And he, he, he sort of leant half forward like a really fat man, trying to reach his shoelaces and failing, yeah? This was 1988. A reverse sweep was sinful. It was as, as bad as a coffin in church, and you didn't cough in church either in 1988. Gatting's awkward stretch forward ends disastrously. And he got halfway through the shot and it sort of the ball hit his shoulder and then onto the keeper who was so surprised Dyer that he almost went a hash and catch it. So it was from that moment on that I think the, the Australians suddenly started to believe that they could win that final. Gatting being the captain, the, the manner in which he got out, something just went in England's spirit that day. I think it just deflated them. But there were other things also wrong with that England performance. Uh, Bill Athey got no criticism at all and yet on a different day he got such a slow half century that, that he'd have had a, a lot of the stick that, uh, that Gatting took instead. And also Paul Downton at six. Why was Paul Downton at six? Why was Phil De, De Freitas carded at least to come in seven? England had a very weak six to eleven in terms of a one day batting lineup. And people have always sort of blamed Gat for that dismissal costing England the World Cup. I think that's a bit unfair. I think it's a viable shot to play. Whether you'd play it first ball against a part-time bowler, that's the question mark. But these things happen and it's those small margins, it's those small things that happen in finals that make the difference. Unfortunately for Gatting, decades later that still remains the biggest talking point of that final. You know, Steve Waugh was arguably the best death bowler in the world at that time, and Valletta played brilliantly. And David Boone got the Man of the Match award for like the slowest 70 you'll see in those sorts of games. But the instant that everyone remembers is that Mike Gatting reverse sweep, and here we are 30 years later, it still hurts. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments in the comments section below. Click on the bell icon for notifications.